Good evening and uh, welcome you all for the second edition of uh, the Thursday Talkies. We would uh, certainly welcome the guest, but before we welcome the guest, I would uh, like you to know a little more about the Amrita Vishwavidya uh, from where I am reporting today is the headquarters at Timade in Coimbatore. And those of you who have tuned in for the first time, I mean, a, a brief note on Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam. And I cut it so short that if you are a person wanting to know about Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam, uh, we have all streams starting from Amrita School of Engineering, Amrita School of Arts and Science, Amrita School of Biotechnology, Amrita School of Business, Amrita School of Medicine, Amrita School of Education, Amrita School of Dentistry, Amrita School of Pharmacy. So you name anything but for law. L A W, but for law we have all streams. So that is what about that's what is about Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam. The secondly, I would also like you to know about uh, this uh, university in terms of ranking. And let me uh, let me also mention to you that Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam is uh, only university or the first university to be the first in Times Higher Education ranking. And uh, the recent Times Higher Education ranking, Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam has been ranked 125th rank in the Asian part of the goal, globe. And then it is again not out of place for me to mention that uh, Amrita Vishwavidya Pidam has been ranked fourth best university in India by the MHRD under the banner NIRF, National Institution framework ranking ranking framework so this is all about amrita vishwavidya pidam so people uh, who are watching me and uh, wishing to join amrita school of engineering the admission uh, the registration for admission is still open uh, luckily you know i mean we are keeping it open till the uh, 10th of uh, august so please do register please do apply through our website www.amrita.edu slash btech. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure each of you are waiting for this uh, talk right through our specially invited guest and uh, we have Dr. Uh, Mr. Benny Kriakos who is the principal for Kur Public School. Uh, it's a place called uh, Gonikupa in uh, Coke District of Karnataka, and uh, it's our uh, pleasure, and uh, we are certainly obliged for his presence here, addressing uh, the students and the parents and uh, the viewers. Yeah, so welcome you all, my dear students, to listen to our special guest, Dr. Benny Kriakos. So welcome you, sir, for this uh, forty-five minutes to fifty minutes of deliberations and. Uh, uh, the topic what we are going to talk today is not about uh, COVID-19, but then connected in 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 short, connected to COVID-19. So we are going we are going to discuss about I am going to discuss about uh, the three C's: connect, create, and uh, communicate. So before we do so, it's always uh, mandatory to know the guest through his own journey about his career. Right. So to start with, my question or my clarity would uh, be on, sir, as to what triggered you to become a teacher? Was it uh, by choice or was it an accident? And if so, it is by choice from which class you felt that you must be a teacher? And if it is on an accidental basis, how did this accident happen and you became a teacher? So welcome you once again, sir, for this uh, interactive session on uh, connect, create, and communicate. Over to you, sir. Welcome you once again on behalf of Amrita Vishwavidya Pedam. Sir, straight question to you is the profession, is the noble profession that you have been into maybe for the last almost three decades. Is it by an accident? If not, it's by choice. And if it is by choice, when did you really think that I should be a teacher when I grow up? And if it is on an accidental basis, 
when did that accident happen so let's hear you and uh, thank you so much again for coming sir over to you dr benny kuria good evening everyone good evening sir thank you very much for that uh, uh, warm welcome and a very good question asked last year in 2019 i was selected as a new leader of year by brain feed uh, magazine hyderabad they asked the same question okay i i had this answer uh, believe me honestly i would admit it's by accident it was not my choice uh in fact after completing my pg ma which subject was that sir which subject did you uh, gr graduate or post graduate yourself i Is did it... post graduation in hindi or national hindi? language oh, yeah. wonderful rashtra bhasha yeah. yeah and i wanted to become a translator but uh, where life has taken me is something different but basically i wanted to get into the armed forces which never happened but after my pg i i was absorbed into a school as a teacher two and a half years i worked there in uh, bhopal uh, after that i again tried my luck in a chemical factory i mean not chemical factory precisely it is uh, uh it is a tool making factory where chemists were required to test the hardness of metals at all i have done that for almost 6 months then i realized this is not my cup of tea my cup of tea is best is the teaching profession that is how i i started liking the profession after almost 3 years and then there was no looking back i have traveled across the nation i worked in different places and uh, in panchagani i worked in a residential school in fact i established one of the well known residential schools there thereafter uh, when my kids were very small i joined a day school in gulbarga in karnataka itself and finally i landed here now again choosing this place there is a reason it is not that i just came in like that but my parents are aging and i wanted to get close to my home state that's the reason why i thought i'll take it up and plus my experience with the residential schools gave me confidence to take over this school that's the reason why i took this opportunity when it came my way almost 3 3 years ago so that's my journey sir wonderful sir it's nice to hear and one of those which i could catch on is about your uh, being honest in saying that you become a teacher not by choice and you become a teacher by accident and i would like uh, if there are uh, there are many number of teachers who are watching us now that if you if you happen to be an accidental teacher right nothing wrong in it you can still be a successful or an extraordinary teacher but what sir mentioned is there was no turning back once you decide on a particular profession either through choice or through accident you can still continue to excel in your profession as a teacher so nothing to worry because i've seen i've seen people saying only you know teachers with uh, who are coming to this profession as a choice by themselves ex become excellent or extraordinary teachers here is one proof that he been honest in saying it is all by accident and uh, we can see successful teacher being a principal of one of those uh, uh, top schools uh, in in bangalore in karnataka kur public school and i think it is I icsc right sir your your school curriculum is icsc and uh, i think it is a wonderful place and second thing which i caught on is uh, uh i i know sir you must be mid 50s i am not supposed to ask i, I am not supposed to ask the age of a no, lady no but you are you are right sir i am mid 50 i know but uh, you know you don't look even that but then looking at your career 
I must say you must be mid 50s, uh, which means you're 55, 54, 55, 56, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. One thing really struck me is about you coming close to your parents. I think I must appreciate that. Whatever you are, whichever position you are, the parents need you as they get older and older. And here is a son, a principal of uh, Kuru Public School, changed his profession or changed his uh, place, getting close to his parents so that he can take care of the parents. We don't find so many such lovable and loving sons and daughters today's contest. So I think we all salute you, sir. That one word you said, I want to get closer to my parents to take care of them. I think this is a great learning to start my discussion with you that uh, we need to take care of our parents and profession, money, status, it is nothing in front of our parents and whatever we are today is because of our parents' blessings. Yeah. Dr. Benny, sir, I think you have struck the nail on the co coffin. I mean, this is, a, this is everybody, uh, we have close to about 200 people watching us now. Everybody must listen to this. So let me get on to my discussions now. We have said connect, create, and communicate. We all know that uh, communication, it's, it's a must. And in today's contest, looking at the technology advancements, communication is just like this. It doesn't take time. And there were days in my life as early as 1960s, if I have to get connected to my father who was away from away from me, he was in, he was in Assam. To communicate to him, there was only one way or two ways. Send him a postcard. I'm sure Benny sir will also agree with me. You have seen a postcard, sir? Yeah, yes. Postcard. Yeah, that was. And it, it used to take 15, almost about two weeks to reach my father from my native place. That was one communication. There is yet another way of communicating to my father was through telephone. And there was only one telephone in my village. And that used to be at the post office. There were days in my life where I have to go and request the postmaster. And there should be something called uh, uh, trunk booking, trunk booking, 180. That was the number, 180. You dial yes. 180 and ask for the number. It takes almost five to six hours to get connected to my father. That was the connectivity. And then sometimes what happens, the connectivity after, after being there for waiting there in the post office for six hours, you get connected and it gets disconnected also. So that was technology 40 years back. But today, things have totally changed. And our discussion is not focused on the usual communication styles or the art of communication. But our communication today is based on the current COVID situation. And I'm sure sir will be able to throw much more light on to as to how one could get connected. So when I yeah. talk about the subject, create, connect, communicate. When you say create, connect and communication, these are all interlinked, interdisciplinary words. To begin with, if you're able to tell us that there is, there is, I won't say there's a difference, but each have to be attached to each other for us to understand things better. So how do you say that if you agree with my statement, all this create, connect and communicate are all interlinked, interconnected? Is it interconnected, sir? I'm yes, sure it's interconnected. interconnected. And how do you say so it is interconnected for our viewers to know before we get on to further clarification from you? Over to you, sir. So before uh, beginning on the subject, uh, when you said about 40 years ago, how the communication happened, I still remember the way I have waited for trunk call bookings and <laughs> the, uh, uh, the days we counted before we could get a letter, inland letter from my yeah. parents or from, from my brothers, uh, you know, when I was working in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, uh, those days, uh, something called STD call started, began STD calls. 
so by using that particular number dialing and uh, getting even it was very difficult our calls used to drop now why we wanted to uh, you know talk to our dear and near ones that way see the word connection connect create communicate all these three words are interconnected and the root probably coming from latin connect or connect here is having the meaning togetherness together or putting together so that is where why human beings are not alone they cannot stay alone so therefore we need to connect that is that connection happens through communication and through this communication connection establishes and we can create new things it may be new materials new ideas new thing it is not only just talking to each other this has got greater uh, in depth meaning so this is what is the interconnection all about these three c's connect create and communicate now in 1990s if you can uh, if you think about 1990s it took almost 150 years for the knowledge to double but you see in 2020 knowledge or human knowledge in totality and talking and not about one person's knowledge the human knowledge the collection of information is doubling almost every 72 hours or 72 days sorry 72 days that is what this is the statistics that you get it in google how far it is true i don't know but the way things are moving forward we will definitely will have to believe that this is really happening now take for example pandemic began without notice lockdown began without notice a days notice was given by our government in on march 23 what happened human beings adapted quickly especially that uh, the schools and colleges university educational institutions adapted began adapting quickly they started connecting with their children their parents by using technology thereby what you created you created more and more people coming online and this is happening how through the communication and you can see now the interconnectivity of this three c's absolutely i think i agree with you that uh, necessity is the mother of invention when uh, it was without notice it is locked down and we adapted to those changes i think uh, well said sir on this issue of connectivity between connection creative i mean connection and communication and then you have talk about the total create something new now my question to you sir is uh, like when you say connectivity it's a connectivity among people and we all have heard you have also have uh, grown as a joint family right you know you have your uncle you have your aunties you have your father's brother mother's brother, all of them used to have a joint family Uh, and uh, each used to support each other and that was a wonderful relation relationship connection connectivity but today they say a joint family means it is it is the total definition of joint family is changed today today the wife and husband staying saying staying together itself is a joint family today and that's it's a, a, it's a joint, yeah, that's joint that's joint family relationship today so under the circumstances you know the, i mean it's it's sort of a nuclear family we are talking about but this pandemic uh, do you think that uh, have uh, brought the connectivity much closer than it was before pan pandemic i mean today the dad mom children uncle auntie are all there at home and this was a forced connectivity which has come because of pandemic do you agree with that sir and what is the take on this particular statement which i made that you are going back to the old style you know today we are not independent we are dependent like for example if my daughter needs anything today since i move out my daughter says dad get me this get me that you know so that dependency has become interdependent i mean interdependency have now grown among the relationships connectivity am i right in what i'm saying or you think that uh, i'm wrong you can correct me if i'm wrong sir over to you sir absolutely sir 
the, this pandemic has uh, brought us all together. In fact, people are having a lot of time to sit back and think, sit back and talk to each other, which they never used to find before the pandemic. We were all on a run. We were, I don't know what kind of race we were in. We were not having time for ourselves, forget others. For ourselves itself, there was no time. Now we have plenty of time for everyone, everything. And uh, but there is a negative side also, yes. <laughs> because when people come together and uh, doing nothing at home, sitting together, you will have problems also cropping up. But then let us not uh, focus on the negatives. The positive side is that definitely families are talking to each other. Family uh, bonding is growing stronger and stronger wherever it is possible. But of course, the other way also, it is, uh, you know, taking us uh that way because you know the communication if it is not in the right spirit definitely it takes you to some other level absolutely that is a problem uh, with us now in the, in, the, in the family for the last six months almost six months we are saying seeing the same faces wherever the okay. lockdown is still going on day in and out you are say, seeing the same faces especially for men it will be very tough because they don't, they never used to sit at home, at least for the uh, day, during the day. Absolutely, now, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The more we, uh, sir, the more we sit to sit, and uh, our family keeps looking at our faces. Uh, yes. Will they get fed up for a period of time? Will they get fed up? I mean, come on, yeah. This guy never used to be there at home. Now he's there always. I hope yes. our families don't get uh, fed up and get disconnected. That won't happen, if I'm sure, isn't it, sir? Will it that happen? Negative side of it. <laughs> I think it depends on the family uh, family by themselves. Now, coming back to this question again, when you talk about uh, connectivity, like, um, uh, is, is, is there uh, some sort of improvement in terms of uh, the care and share of uh, love, affection, gratitude? All these have improved because of the COVID. I mean, uh, you take care of... Uh, I mean, I, let me talk about myself. I, when I get back home, I certainly call up my house and ask, what is that you need for the house today evening? There's a lot of share. You want anything to be, biryani to be bought from that particular hotel, which was not so before COVID, you know. The the yeah. the, the affection of the love has actually propelled uh, uh, over the last three or four months. Is it is it is it happening across uh, uh, the other families where the connectivity has become uh, sort of a bonding among the relationship is what I'm saying correct, sir, or you think uh, there could be a correction yeah, on what I'm saying? No, you you are absolutely right. That connection, that bonding is happening now. And uh, see, initially people thought that this uh, lockdown for two weeks it will end. Yeah. Yeah. Then came another extension of uh, that. There also people were very patient, thought that maybe after a month it will open. It never happened. It went on and on. And uh, then later, central government came and told states can decide. Now, states, what they are doing, they are they are uh, uh, creating small, small pockets wherever this uh, pandemic has, uh, you know, uh, done havoc. And they are segregating that containment zones are declared. And this is going on. And this is this has become a, a daily routine for us. And therefore, what, what is happening now, human beings, at least pe thinking people started thinking, okay, whatever I do, whatever I earn uh, during my lifetime, one small bacteria, one small virus can take my life away. The reality has hit hard. So therefore, people are sitting, sitting back and reflecting upon the situation that they are in. And probably that is bringing in some positive change. As you suggested, you, you yourself uh, never used to ask your family what to get. <laughs> no, I, I, I never used to get bothered about what is happening at home. Now I get into the kitchen. I yeah, try yeah. to help. Something, uh, my wife tells me that, uh, you, why don't you try something, uh, some non-veg items? Normally, men are supposed to be preparing that. Yes, of course, we try a hand there, not successfully, but... Definitely with some help. This is happening because we are realizing the futility of our life. 
a small virus can disturb it to this core so therefore what is what is the point in uh, thinking about our future build up and uh, uh, the situations that is going to come up or what kind of achievements i'm going to make see life has become simple take it a day present day you live it enjoy it and that's it if we can help each other if we are of some help to others definitely that is most satisfying that is what i feel i i i'm sure, i mean what you mentioned is uh, totally right and true to my understanding of things but sir we are talking about the connectivity as far as the family is concerned like for example we have maybe two or three or four at home and uh, we are connected well uh, because of the pandemic but then today we are going to talk about our little children when i say little children is not of kindergartens i'm talking about the entire uh, school students i'm talking about that because for uh, a student you know his day to day life if you look at it going to school is itself is an entertainment i mean it starts off uh, the mom pushing the child to wake up at 6:30 7 in the morning preparing him or her to board the bus preparing lunch and tiffin for her to have it in the school the bus comes and the horns pa 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 this guy runs and sometimes he forgets his tiffin carrier mummy runs along with the tiffin and gets into the bus and each of them will sing some song till the school reaches and once the school reaches uh, you have an assembly then you have the regular classes so and you have lunch among uh, the other friends and uh, you go to the ground to play the choice of your games now sir all this have stopped in the last 3 4 uh, months sir so for a child for a child he needs to have the connectivity with his friends which is not so now you we can't have a zoom it's okay no other go but the real connectivity the physical connectivity putting your hand over the shoulders of your friends and walking in the school is missing today so what do you say sir there is a lot of feel in the minds of a child when am i going to see my friend and put both my hands on my friends and keep walking and singing songs enjoying myself the friendship that connectivity because i know people who leave the school they have their certificates whether it is a cbsc certificate or icic ib whatever it does they carry the certificate when they leave but something which they can not drop it at the school is friendship friendship is something they carry for rest of their life but today where is the connectivity as for the friends are connect i mean connected today they are not connected today sir i want you to ease the minds of the children saying that look this is a short term crisis yes. this is not going to be a permanent and i want you to talk to those children and the parents and the teachers who are listening today how do i convince those little children who cannot connect among their friends over to you sir yes very true sir in fact the teachers the teachers of the primary section pre primary and primary section in fact primary pre primary section i will say every year in the come june first two weeks we will have parents and kids together sitting in the class uh, <laughs> they they enter the campus they are uh, in fact parents mothers especially mothers are somehow pushed out of the class they were asked to sit in the foyer and these little kids the teachers will struggle to keep them happy by giving chocolate singing to them dancing all kinds of activities will go on we are missing that this year yeah, you know sir. that is a beautiful beautiful phase of uh, the beginning of the year where these little kids try to adjust with not the friends they are all strangers in the first two weeks and then comes that friendship and you know build up and that fear is gone away they start mingling they start talking to each other try to touch each other find out how the other person reacts all these things are gone and definitely children and their teachers are missing each other and children kids are missing that kind of a bonding 
talking to uh, a group of children in the community that is missing now how do we go about it of course we can talk about the online classes zoom meeting all those kinds are going on but you don't have that feel absolutely so that we can say is that okay of course the vaccine testing is going on very soon probably we all will be taking a shot of that and we will be safe the schools will reopen definitely this bad phase this sad phase will also pass that is the only message we can give and that is the only hope available and for the parents with the online classes recorded classes or live classes whatever is available support your kids with whatever way you can you may complain about connectivity of course if we open that particular topic it is a pandora's box a lot of it is a, it is a it political yeah we cannot we cannot pass comments that way so therefore with whatever limited resources are available make things happen for your kids of course we are not forgetting those millions of kids out of the school out of the government schools they cannot even afford a square meal a day we cannot forget them also but at least children those who are coming from well to do families definitely you can support let us not crib on the situation that we are in or try to you know okay this is not in my control so therefore i'll just uh, sit quietly no that is not the way that is not our answer that should not be our answer let us support our kids in whatever way we can and uh, the mother sitting at home if at all you of course parents both are at home right now even if they are working they are working from home w f h is going on so therefore they can definitely help their children to tide over this phase definitely they can cope up with this situation that they are in and remember one more thing here the teachers teachers those who are not trained for taking online classes facing the camera and talking to a camera which doesn't give any response or reaction it's a dead face talking to a dead man and when there is no reaction we don't know teachers don't know how to you know go about because in a normal classroom of 30 40 students you have one or two sitting at the back bench or the middle bench uh, poking the other one and the teacher has got some moment to pass a comment or admonish the child or uh, or connect with that particular topic this particular fellow's behavior etc lot of things happen but this is not happening there here either on ppt or on zoom meeting you are talking to a camera without uh, without expecting any response and you are going on talking one way traffic and whatever your students feelings are there their uh, 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 expressions that is missing and definitely i'm i'm uh, uh, believe me sir you are also a teacher th therefore you know without getting a feedback response from the children if we are supposed to be teaching it's very difficult we need special training that is what i believe in in fact uh, the technology that we have we have wonderful technology in place but to put that into practice with the uh, teachers those who are having 20 plus years of service it is very difficult but definitely the young generation will cope up very well they will adapt very well but uh, parents above and kids do not worry you enjoy the present time with your parents at home keep learning keep reading the books keep reading the newspaper and uh, today uh, by tomorrow's newspaper there will be the new education policy coming up it's all over in the uh, media right now uh, you can discuss debate about it because the whole education arena is shifting towards a sea change it is totally going to change the way uh, the policy the first look that is what the feeling i got so therefore nothing to worry this phase also shall pass and we will wait for it pray for it let's hope our scientists will succeed with the vaccine at the earliest wonderful sir yeah wonderful i think rightly said that uh, 
there are nobody with no problems every human being will have some problem or the other and rightly said by our sir that these problems have not come to stay with you these problems have come to pass so it's matter of time that uh, this will not be there at all and i'm sure the wordings and uh, the assurances given by uh, dr benny sir will certainly happen as early as possible but nobody can predict as to when it is going to happen but it is going to happen so live with that uh, confidence live with that strength in mind these are all just passing cloud so let's face it with courage let's immune ourselves to this particular virus i think that's what uh, 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 doctor told us now but then sir i have uh, when you say communication uh, i i feel so sorry uh, for our teachers as you rightly said <laughs> it's like you know uh, looking at a dead body you said because we don't even know who it's it, the camera is a dead body i'm looking at the camera whether uh, what is it going to do i think it is doing but still like a madman i keep talking at least i'm able to see you but sometimes yeah. what happens if you're a news reader you don't see anybody you just look at the camera so it is you know you just talk to the dead camera and it's capturing you and you keep talking and as you rightly said you need some practice to talk to a dead camera though it is alive for me it is dead because our teachers are used to seeing those uh, uh, actions of our students when they teach whether he is hearing or listening or what is he doing is your understanding and teachers keep asking you understood right you understood what so nothing can be done today and teachers are going through tough times but one thing sir all sudden that our entire teacher fraternity are doing an excellent job sir mm-hmm. they have never permitted or allowed the process of teaching and learning to go for a halt there was no pause it is continuing it is it is something remarkable job our teachers are doing yes but then but then i have some complaint on our parents you said the parent used to come and then has to leave the school those are missing but today the parents are sitting along with the children viewing our teachers our teachers are doing excellent congratulations to each one of the teachers who are now watching this particular program wonderful keep it going let it keep going nothing to worry a day will come you will become masters on live classes and future is going to be blended classes it's going to be classroom plus it is going to be live so this is going to continue isn't it sir i feel it's going to continue and it will continue like blended teaching and learning process but my 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 question now is the parents has to be communicated sir i want the parents to understand that this change is not that easy this change is not that easy as since you have traveled across the country if a person from let's say chennai goes to delhi in the month of let's say january or december or january they'll be frozen and they will have to wear those sweaters and pullovers oh my god it's so chilly there in the month of january i'm not talking to go to you know see a chill to experience this just go there you need to adjust so but for a for a person who is already there in delhi it's a common thing the wind is too strong the summer is again strong so our teachers are going through this sudden winter and they are not they weren't prepared but our parents sit along with those students watch the teachers and make some unparliamentary comments on our teachers i have i've seen videos <laughs> i've seen clippings saying that oh this teacher that that teacher i think that is not right sir i think that i cannot accept it because everybody goes through that learning process a, a, a class of 40 if you teach maybe there are students who will understand within 5 minutes there are some students 10 minutes some students need to be further coached so similarly the teachers also will take time but it is not right on the part of the parents to pass comments on teachers watching them teaching isn't it sir and what is your communication when you talk about communication to the parents as to the difficult path our teachers are going while teaching on live class your comments on that sir to the parents i want you to communicate to the parents please go ahead sir you are also a parent your child is also studying in the college right so i want this communication to go not to make fun of our teachers that's yes. the learning process over to you sir 
very true sir uh, see in my school now right now what we are doing is it is recorded classes getting uploaded we don't have live classes because the uh, geographical area that we are in we have very poor connectivity only in the small towns a bit connection will be there uh, otherwise connectivity is very bad but as you rightly pointed out wherever live classes are going on uh, in fact my daughter is also a teacher she is taking class online it is live class so in that i have seen uh, but it is a controlled class it can be controlled by using technology but again uh, there are parents there are uh, 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 other siblings walking around in the room uh, if the video is open normally they don't allow the video to be uh, switched on uh, but the audio is always on audio also they switch off and uh, listen to the teacher but at once in a while it will come in but i have uh, um, i mean uh, in whatsapp and all uh, the clippings i have seen <coughs> where parents will come and sit along with the the students and yeah. then start correcting the teachers see the greatest folly the parents do they first of all don't understand the psychology of education and their kids the moment you start correcting a teacher in front of the child however uh, uh, blunder the teacher has done the child loses the faith on that particular teacher absolutely the respect of that child for that teacher is lost in the other way also it happens if Uh, the children think especially in primary classes if parents are trying to correct the teacher the reaction of children will be different child will teach the parent yes my teacher is correct you are wrong even if the correct thing is told by the parent definitely the kid will argue with the parent tell that my teacher because it is my teacher absolutely absolutely right. teacher is always right teacher can't go wrong but when it comes to higher classes the whole scenario changes so parents need to understand the present day teachers are not trained for taking online classes talking to camera is not their cup of tea and they are not trained for that now schools are the the management schools heads are trying to trying to help children by airing online classes and when they do this there is a lot of struggle you need to understand this now for example recording a class the teachers are not allowed to come to the school because of fear of contracting of virus when they travel so therefore they are sitting at home and recording the classes what i am experiencing i am explaining please teachers teachers told me that when when they are when they are recording the sessions sometimes the dog will bark sometimes the, some visitors will come in all these things will get recorded so it is spoiled again they have to delete that and re-record it is a herculean task for the teachers and it takes days and weeks planning and collecting information collecting resources from the net putting it together then knitting it giving audio uh, to that it's a tough job that our teachers are going through hats off to them they have they were very quick in learning that technology Absolutely. some of them were not even knowing how to operate a computer now they become have, experts <laughs> yes they, now they are becoming experts i'm very happy about it this is the way teachers are struggling for their kids so therefore my request to the parents is that accommodate ignore if at all some mistakes are being committed by the teachers it is quite natural quite normal it happens when you are facing a camera and taking a class it is the whole uh, thing is different what kind of tension the teacher is undergoing you cannot imagine we can face 100 children together but facing one camera you need special training because you are not getting any response 
so therefore it is all the more difficult for the teachers to you know uh, record the class or live classes now suppose if a child is switching on the the audio or the video the other children are getting distracted in some cases parents uh, we request teachers request the parents to be disciplinarians in at home at least somebody should be disciplining the children but in some cases we have seen the parents are least bothered what children are doing in some cases we have seen that uh, defacing of teachers uh, photos and uploading it in their live classes there are a lot of things happening so in this parents are the first and foremost disciplinarians and they should remain so only teachers can supplement that teachers cannot be primary disciplinarians whatever discipline coming from home will be displayed in public we can only modify that we cannot completely change so therefore my request to parents is that accommodate our teachers whatever uh, struggle they are taking and uh, uploading the classes or taking live classes enjoy that class encourage the children to uh, cope up with the class by having the textbooks and notebooks side by side going through it encourage that and there should be some kind of a timetable at home wherein they should be using that classes and following the exercises or assignments set by the teachers now teachers are not able to check whether they are doing the assignments or not parents will have to do it and parents will have to communicate continuously with the school through emails in fact we are uh, we are airing the email id personal email official email id is created for the teachers so that you know parents can communicate with the teacher directly and teachers will be responding to that so all these uh, uh, facilities that we are trying to put in place is to help the parents and children to cope up with this pandemic and see that this one year is not lost maybe the syllabus will get reduced but we have to see that the core subject is delivered it is learned and one year is not wasted this way it has to go forward we cannot just uh, you know complain about the situation that we are in and then uh, sit back and relax no that is not human nature whatever uh, is coming our way we find ways and means to overcome it and that is how we go forward and that's a spirit that's a human spirit and that has to be continued in that process i appreciate the efforts of all the teachers not only my school all the teachers in fact i am in touch with many of the principals on a daily basis i'll be talking to one or uh, some or the other uh, principals and uh, we are sharing the experiences and in that we are of course majority of the parents 99% i must say they are supportive and they are helping their kids to learn there is a few uh, there are a few uh, uh, people those who do not understand the situation that we are in and then they try to create or one up manship you want to prove you are better than the teachers but the purpose what's the purpose of that that they don't realize they will realize it only after some time what kind of folly they are making so uh, but nothing to worry sir I, i i believe i strongly feel that 99% of our people are good and they are following the instructions the communication is going from the school and this is where the connection create and communicate this is the best time to discuss this particular topic we are communicating continuously we are in touch with the parents with the with the children continuously before this pandemic we never used to that only uh, uh, thrice or four times in a year we used to meet <laughs> but now on a daily basis we are talking to the parents we are communicating with the parents see the uh, uh, way how the pandemic has taken us over to you sir it's 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 rightly said and i certainly appreciate uh, the uh, communication which you have given to the parents like the first thing which i really liked was please do not talk ill about our teachers because the moment in front of our children i think that is one very important fact most of us must practice that it's easy to point fingers 
right? Yeah. If, I finger, if, I, if I point finger on a teacher sitting in front of the child, let us also realize there are three fingers pointing on you, yes. right? You discipline yourself as a parent and whatever has to be communicated, you can do it privately, not in front of your child. Every t See, criticism is not bad. Unless you criticize, you can't improve yourself. A critically analysis, analysis is always welcome. But that doesn't mean you can do it in the presence of the child, as rightly said by principle, that the more you do it, the more dislike, the more disrespect, the you know, or the more uh, lesser value for the teacher comes into the mind of the child. And that is going to harm the child's growth. Well said, sir. I think I appreciate and uh, the, 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 the way you said, I think the parents would have certainly understood that this has to be, not to be done. I would say so. Sir, I, I when you talk about communication, I, uh, with your experience and uh, with you conducting live classes for your students through the teachers, how can the communication be effective? on a live class how can you make it how can you make that particular student listening to the teacher for 40 minutes or 45 minutes and from the teacher side you know unless the unless the class is interesting the children are not going to sit and listen they may sit live in front of the camera and act as if they are listening but they are not listening mentally they are away physically they are present and teachers cannot view this. But in a classroom, you can understand. Yeah. Maybe by their gestures and body language, the eyes goes here, eyes goes there. You know, this guy is not listening. But in the, in, in the case of a live class, how can a teacher make it more interesting, right? Make it more engaging and make it more attentive for the students to say, stay live listening to teacher. Because the more you listen, the more you learn. And if you don't listen, you don't learn. Can we, can, is there any techniques which you have found in the last four months of your exposure into this live classroom to make the classroom through live more effective and impactful? Your suggestions and take away from this particular clarification, which I just asked you now, sir. Over to you, Dr. Benny. Yeah. See, <clears throat> To make the class interesting, see, normally any experienced teacher uh, who is having some experience of taking class, maybe four or five years of experience in taking class, they will know in what way they can connect or what way they can click with the children. They have that knack of, uh, you know, taking the class forward creating interest in the uh, children. Now, such teachers can make the online classes very interesting. For example, in one of the classes I have seen, one teacher employed, uh, you know, the class was, um, uh, I think, language class, one of the language classes. The teacher, uh, a teacher is trying to teach a poem, I suppose. And in the poem, it's all about colorful birds. So instead of just uh, uh, singing that song or explaining that poem, what she did is she just narrated about the poem, what is the uh, content of the poem, and and inserted a small clip of colorful real birds and instead of teaching the teaching the poem she just uh, you know her imagination it is definitely children will hook to it because you are not teaching any words or sentences or something like that and once that interest is created definitely children will next part children will listen to you then regarding the duration, you said it is 45 minutes. Actually, uh, as per government rule, it is 30 minutes. But personally, what I feel is that online classes, you, you don't have any disturbance from your students. You are talking to a camera, sitting in front of a camera. And uh, the, once the attendance is taken, 
what you can deliver in 15 minutes is tremendous. 15 minutes is too much time. Because it is not two-way communication, it is one way. And in 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, you can uh, initiate the class, you can connect it with the previous class, if at all anything, any connection is there. And then you can uh, 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 go ahead with your class, present it in an interesting way with uh, anecdotes or some small clippings, which is relevant for the topic, and then conclude it Definitely, children will be hooking on to that. Why I am telling this? In a, in a home atmosphere, there will be, every home will not have a separate room for a child. Uh, so most of the time, child will be sitting in the living room or drawing room. It is a common place. People will be coming and going. So therefore, what happens? Distraction, disturbance is always there. Though we may not be always experiencing it, but children may be getting distracted. Even in a normal classroom with somebody passing in the corridor, children will look out. They get distracted. So in a living room, you can expect what kind of distractions will be there. So therefore, keep the class short and keep it engaging. Children should be interested to watch. And what is depending upon the age factor. Now, if you are taking a class for a, uh, a 12th grader or, an, or a first PUC, uh, person, the class should be really engaging. Otherwise, they will not be able to listen. They will not be having that kind of attention span. So therefore, you need to have that knack of presenting your class in a, in a way that is interesting, to, uh, creating interest in the child. Like for example, uh, for 10th and above, if you are talking about some video game, some kind of online uh, uh, chatting or online games, etc., you will you are there. You will connect, and for that, teachers also should be able to play such games or at least basics. You should be knowing, and you have to create that interest to connect with the children of the present day. And in the junior classes, you know that kind of uh, things are there. Cartoon channels are there, or uh, the latest one in our times it was Tom and Jerry. That is the only thing that we remember. But uh, uh, those days, of course, it was not uh, TV or uh, computer or anything like that. Uh, but at least through the uh, books, we know Tom and Jerry and uh, some other small cartoon characters. But today, there are so many. If you are able to connect with that and present it in the language they connect very well, definitely your class will be interesting and children will listen to you. But if you present a hi-fi thing in a hi-fi manner, Nobody will listen. Nobody will pay attention. They will not understand also. So depending upon the age group that we are addressing, definitely something that connects that age group, if it is present in the class, definitely children will get hooked on to it. And that is the way it should be taken forward. And the class for especially primary and secondary classes, middle school, etc., the class duration should not be for more than 30 minutes. Their attention span it will not stay there. That is the reason why we should limit the class to a shorter duration and in between breaks and then uh, come back to the class again. That is the best way to, you know, um, take care of the kids of their schooling years. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. I think principal certainly said the right way to keep your class, kiss the class. Kiss, kiss the class means keep it short and uh, sweet. And that's how yes. one should go about conducting those live classes so that the impactability of your class is not yes. how long you conduct the class, but how well you conduct it is what really yes. matters. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you so much for your advice. And before we disconnect ourselves from this particular episode or the event or the live show, I just want to ask you, what is your takeaways from the latest NEP, the National Education Policy. Uh, what do you feel about it? So that you know, some teachers, some educators could uh, hear it from you. What do you, what do you think about it? So it's too early, but still, on whatever you are read, whatever I've seen, I would like to hear from you, from your knowledge on education. Over to you on the new NEP, sir. Uh, I must confess that I haven't studied it completely. I just saw the points, and uh, what I what I like from the policy is that. See, uh, they are splitting the uh, schooling into different levels. Up to fifth standard, it is called as preschool. Wonderful. 
I agree with that. Because children should be left to learn in their own pace and learning their mother tongues. It is made compulsory. And Sanskrit is a language that is coming. I don't know whether it is compulsory or not. That is a beautiful language. It is forgotten. But it is a good thing that is coming back. One, some way it may help us. And another good thing that I have noticed is that after 8th standard, that is from 8th standard onwards, children will be allowed to select their subject. It's a great thing that ICSE is right now doing. That is from 9th standard, they can select their subject, core subjects like math, sciences, etc. They can select. Suppose a child uh, doesn't want to study uh, mathematics. Oh, mathematics is a dreaded subject for the child. No question of forcing that child to learn mathematics. Instead, we have a host of subjects available right now. So the same thing is happening in this policy. From 8th standard, you are able to choose the subject you want to learn. And from 6th standard onwards, vocational courses are going to come. And this is going to help people. Because unnecessarily, you are studying a lot of subjects. And you are you never know that you are using it in life or not. But you are learning a lot of things. By the time you cross 10th standard, you are learning a lot of subjects, whether you like it or not. But this is the beauty of this particular new policy. What I have seen, what uh, struck my eyes is that choice of subjects are given to the children. So children and parents will have to start thinking or identifying the talent or taste of the child when the child reaches fifth standard and start grooming your child towards that subject which he or she likes. Do not try to force subjects because you want to see your child to be so and so in future. Identify the talent of your child and groom that child towards that definitely your children will bloom without any problems. And this is the takeaway. And this is what I like mostly in the new policy. Let's study it in detail and then we will be in a position to come. Yes, I think on a nutshell, you have really explained to all of us that uh, the child need to be taught what he likes to learn. The child need not be taught what the parents like the child to learn. Because, you know, you uh, you have to have a passion and interest for a particular subject, not force it onto a child, right? So I think it is, that's a, one, of the, one of the best observations uh, that you had in a matter of a few hours of the release of the new NEP. And I'm sure the parents and the teachers would have now understood that let's, let's not get on to their necks and say, because, I, uh, because my neighbor's son is a doctor, you also be a doctor. You know, that, that will not work. Because this guy's potential would be to become an engineer. Now, if somebody, for example, if I always ask questions, Sachin Tandulkar was made a doctor instead of a cricketer, what would have been the scenario? So I think <laughs> his parents understood that this guy is going to be a cricketer and send him to uh, cricket. That's what is required. So please don't force that. That's what uh, Sir has just mentioned that don't force it on down their neck if they're not interested on a particular subject or a topic. So here is where the policy says like he can choose his own choice of uh, subject. I think that is a that's a well observed comment, uh, Dr. Sir. And it's time for us to wind up now. It's already crossed uh, five o'clock. And I do not know how to say thanks. Thanks is a simple word right, with few letters onto it. But then we have certainly enlightened us with new informations on the topic what we discussed, create, connect, and communicate. We certainly, on behalf of Amrita Vishwavidya Pedam, especially thank, especially thank uh, Dr. Benny Kuria Kos for his time addressing all the teachers, all the parents, even quite a few students on live today. And hope to see you again. And when the time permits, when you cross Coimbatore, please do drop in. Even otherwise, my invitation for you to visit our university is all open and pray God, the Almighty, to clear all these obstacles of journey today. And let's live a free, happy, 
life in the future. So wishing you all who are the viewers here very best and stay safe, stay secured, obey the rules, obey those instructions from the government. I think we need to support government. We need to take care of ourselves. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure that all your initiatives and strategies and your thoughts, we will do it in our classrooms to make our classes more effective and impactful. With this few words, it's Medhul Krish signing off from Amada Vishwadhyaya PWM at headquarters. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. And the last word is Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Thank you very much.